This episode of Grilled is sponsored by Rationale, your leading provider in multifunctional hot food preparation equipment. Register now for a free Rationale live demo at www.rationale-online.com. Thanks for downloading Grilled by the Staff Canteen. I'm Cara, editor of the Staff Canteen, and in this episode, founder Mark Morris travelled to Rock in Cornwall to talk to Paul Ainsworth. He talks about the Mariners and why he wanted to take on a pub, the risks involved in business, and why it is so important to surround yourself with the right people and nurture your team. Yes. Right. Rocking it. We're rolling. <laughs> now we got it working. Paul. <coughs> so, introduce yourself. My name's Paul Ainsworth, and I have got a collection of businesses in Padstow and Rock. Right. Let's talk about what is becoming the Ainsworth Empire. Talk us through what's in the business at the moment. So we've got the first business that I started in 2005 called uh, Paul Ainsworth at number six. Uh, Reggiano's, which is now being rebranded as Cafe Reggiano by Paul Ainsworth. The Mariners Public House in Rock, Padso Townhouse and Mahe Cookery School and Chef's Table. Right, let's start with the Mariners. Here we are on a cold January morning and yet it's beautiful, right? Yeah. Look at that. I mean, yeah. okay, people can't see this, but to the right is the estuary. Um, over there is Padstow. Why did you take this over? I mean, where, where, other than the view, yeah. Where, where <laughs> do I start? It just fitted with. It's a really good question, actually, because it just fitted with what me and Emma want to do, and the plan and long-term plan for myself and Emma is to keep everything close by. Uh, and as a chef, you know, like uh, that, we, me and Emma, you know, really admire as a couple. You know, it's Tom and Michaela Kitchen. And, you know, when we get, meet up with them, they have a very, very similar outlook. You know, it's almost like the bon, Bonnie Badger. It's yep. a bit like the Mariners. It's yep. just outside of what where the rest is. And that was the same for us, Mark. You know, we, we want to keep it. We want to keep it as local as we can so that I can be in all the businesses. Um, I don't ever say that I'm cooking at the Mariners yep. or Cafe Reggiano or um, uh, Mahe. But I am at number six, yep. and that's where you'll that's where you'll find me in the kitchen. But I am here every day. My morning will start with maybe coming to the Mariners first, having a good catch up with Paul Dodd. Then I'll go over to Cafe Reggiano and see um, Alex and Jack, and and so on and so on. And that to me is really really important. And I can honestly say that's how me and Emma see our long term future. So when we were asked to you know to do the Mariners, I think inside every chef. There's that kind of romantic notion of a pub, running a pub, uh, of running a pub, <laughs> and I've got to say, I've I've loved every single second of it. I've, you know, the location of where it is, how we've interpreted the pub, and what I've done. You know, it helps when you know one of your, you know, your best friend is Tom Kerridge. You know, Tom's been a, you know, Tom's been a, you know, a great. Um, sort of help and sort of telling me you know because Tom's a modern day pub landlord yeah. um, my business partner um, you know Derek that was his background yeah. you know like pubs and so I've had some really good advice yeah. and, and together I think me and Emma have created something that is for the community yeah. uh, it's accessible to everybody and you mentioned community there and sorry to interrupt we talked off off mic pubs are boozers as well aren't they yeah and, and they have to be accessible to the community yeah. and, and you mentioned Tom there Tom's always made sure of that as well. Is that has that been something that's been important to you here at the Mariners? Hugely, because I think when me and Emma came over here, we knew that like, do you know what? Padstow would really enjoy this yeah. because it gives them the opportunity to come on the Rock Ferry. Yeah. And when you go on the Rock Ferry, it's a great experience. Yeah, yeah. It's brilliant because you're like, I live here. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, and then you've and it's got a forty minute drive as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, right the way around. And then you've got this, but also you can come over here and you can come in here and have a scotch egg and a pint. And it, do you know what I mean? Literally, it's going to cost you eight quid. Yeah. And to me, that was hugely important. Like the other day, I came in here, January, and there was a group of people having a game of chess by the fire. And that is all hugely important for me. Yes, pubs have become gastronomic yeah. uh, because I think they've had to diversify, certainly since the changes. Big one, no smoking. <clears throat> so. Those kind of boozers of the old days of having a sing song on the piano and everyone smoking and drinking and all of that, that has died a little yeah, bit. Yeah. And pubs have had to diversify in how they approach um, the industry, otherwise they won't survive. Yeah. Uh, and like you alluded to earlier, you know, wet sales has dropped. Yeah. And 
So when we did the Mariners, you know, like to give you a quick overview of, you know, of the plan, you know, downstairs, no booking. Yeah. Where we're sat now, no booking. Yeah. The terrace, no booking. The only bookable place is the top floor. Yeah. So people can come in here and try and grab a table and have a light bite. Secondly, like dogs, wanted dogs to be all downstairs, but then up here, no dogs. So then again, you're giving a bit to everyone because yeah. not everyone loves dogs. Yeah. But Padstow, I think, is the dog capital of the world. <laughs> <clears throat> So that was also hugely important for us to, you know, to do. And then we had to find that balance because, you know, up here we've got a full upstairs, but then downstairs you can literally just go to the bar with the menu and order a burger. Yeah. So it's taken us a while to kind of get that balance. But what it has given is this place of like this almost this social hub to kind of come and soak up the great views, have really accessible food at a great price. The beer is also at a great price. Sharps Brewery have been, you know, been fantastic in um, in also helping us kind of offer, you know, beer at an accessible, uh, you know, an accessible price. Yeah. And also, we want to showcase beer because actually I think beer, you know, I think we all know wine and food is a perfect match. Gin's, you know, going through its incredible yeah. revolution. But do you know what? Cask Cascale beer is amazing and it's not just for the socks and sandals brigade it is you know you've got some incredible brewers now in the uk brew all these little microbreweries popping up every everywhere um brewing brilliant beer yeah that does go great with food like you come in here and have like you know the offshore pilsner with some oysters it's, it's it's amazing. It's not lager. It's citrusy. It's yeah. lovely. Have that with some oysters, which is just there. You can see the barge now. Yeah. That's that's Tim on the barge, like and you know for the purpose of people listening, Paul is now waving to Tim on the barge. Who, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Tim. <laughs> and Tim, Tim is, is waving, waving back. back. <laughs> <laughs> and that is why I don't want to go anywhere else. And I love Cornwall. Right, Regiano. So I want to talk about Regiano. Yeah. Because I drove my family four hours down from Dorset to eat in Regiano's because yeah. it is absolutely amazing. I, I love it. I it's love your favourite, isn't it? I You've love always, the concept. Yeah, I love yeah. the concept, Paul. Um, I want to talk about, first of all, when we first spoke to you about Regiano's, you were going to roll it out as a concept. Yeah. It, it's got roll out written all over it. Firstly, why didn't you? I went to a, I'm not going to name it, but I went to a chain yep. middle market restaurant um, about six years ago. Yeah. And you're right. The idea behind Regiano's was we were building it up to roll it out, yeah. and um, my business partner Derek, you know, you know, could put us in touch with the right kind of people, venture capitalists, to support that and roll it out. Because you're right, it, it has got that model yeah, that absolutely. can roll out. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying that I'm a you know a pioneer or or I saw it then. But I went to I went to a middle market uh, restaurant yeah. that was fantastic. The the fixtures and fittings were of high quality. The cutlery was Robert Welsh. It was all lovely. But the one thing that let the whole thing down was the team. The team were were dreadful, and the food wasn't particularly brilliant. And we were quite we were really into this, like you know this rollout. And I said to Emma, like I absolutely. I can only best describe it is you know like excuse the you know the language I, I did I shit myself yeah, I yeah. was like yeah, yeah. I don't want to do this this is your name above the door right I yeah I don't want to I don't want to do this yeah. this I've I've what I think I wanted is is actually that's not what I want yeah. I I want to I want to be a commercially driven businessman I I enjoy business I I I am understand that you can't just be a romantic chef because yeah. if you are just all about the the cooking in the kitchen in that light it's 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 dog eat dog and it's a very very hard industry to survive in and, and you don't see got many old <clears throat> either. and you've got to understand business yeah. so i we jumped in the car that weekend and we drove all the way to derbyshire where where sort of derek lives and i was a bit nervous because i was a bit kind of like i didn't want to look like i was scared you know scared or and i i think i was trying to sort of understand why I didn't want to do it. Yeah. And, you know, and he just said to me, look, I completely and utterly respect your your decision. Um, and I was like, you know, I'm not saying that I just want to, this romantic notion of, 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 of what being a chef is. I don't want to roll something out that I can't control. From that day on, that was why, and I didn't know it was going to end up like this, but I just had this idea in my mind that, I want I want to ha I want to be able to offer people, you know, different diverse roles. I want to grow a company, you know. I, 
I enjoy that. You know, I want to. I want to one day have an operations director. I want to be able to grow John Walton, who's been stood yeah, by yeah, my side for ten, yeah. uh, for fifteen years. Chris McClurg. I enjoy that side of it. I, I hands hands on the table. I never. I never wanted to be a chef that just was on the stove with, you know, doing 20 covers yeah. and, you know, a washer upper and a couple of others. Yes. Not knocking that. It just wasn't me. I, I, I enjoy yeah. the diversity of it all. So how is Reggiano's changing now? It's rebranding. I've been yeah. over there this <clears> morning. <throat> you can't move in Patch, though, for, for, for painters and decorators. Decorate, so, yeah. So what, what's, why are you changing it? Well, the biggest thing is, which... Um, incredibly proud of and it doesn't often happen in the industry is me and emma exchanging completed on the freehold uh Brilliant. five weeks ago congratulations thank you and but also big big financial risk right huge yeah we borrowed a significant amount of money yeah um and the way that me and emma the way that i see it is when you sit does in, that worry you borrowing hugely, money yeah hugely when i when you sit in front of you know what they call panel solicitors and yeah. they sort of explain to you that you understand what you're doing here don't you and yeah. you do yeah and they understand the charges and the guarantees that you have laid down yeah. and you're like what's yeah. it risk for if it goes wrong are uh, everything right every single thing i just want thing. people to understand you know because they see you on tv and and you know we look out in beautiful locations and like this and it, yeah. it's very easy to think it's all easy yeah but i don't think people understand you know i spoke with tom when he, when he took the hand and flowers over he didn't have enough money for the float and all of those type of yeah. things you know behind all of you guys you know there's always a risk as well yeah. right yeah uh, so for on this, yep. um, we've we bought two point seven million pounds, wow. and every single business that we have is down as a guarantee, wow. and our home, right? So wow. our, our, our my family home, yeah, and that to me is that's the motivation. That's balls on the line, right? That's the drive. That's the like you know as we see here, we can't see my little girls in yeah, there, yeah. and and that's the drive. And I've yeah. said to Emma. Like, we've just got to get our heads down and we've just got to make sure, of course we're going to make sure that we keep driving, we keep pushing it and we make sure that Regina's is a success because the other thing with a lot of chefs, I haven't got a pension, Mark. I haven't got any, no, no, I haven't no. got any pension schemes or, or anything like that. That there is my, that there is my... That's your pension. That's my pension. That's my daughter's inheritance. Yeah. That's, that's everything. Yeah. And to be... You know, to, you know, right now is a good time to to borrow money, um, but we've we've put everything. Is on money the line. cheap at the moment? Then money's very cheap at okay. the moment, yeah. and <clears throat> and it won't be forever. No, and now's the right time to do it. But at the same time, yes, money's cheap at the moment, but it's you've you've also got to have the you've also got to have the the structure and the capital and for the bank to kind of go well, okay, yeah, we'll we'll lend you that. Yeah. So that has been, you know, that's been made possible by the Mariners and, yeah. you know, taking on the Mariners, which again is a, we've, because we've run it like a pub and it's a, it's, it's great quality, great quality booze, great quality food, but it's, it's accessible for the masses and, and everyone can enjoy it. Yeah. And the support from the local people has been incredible. So when you do that, do I want to be in London? We're opening a restaurant. Do I want to go further afield abroad? No, I don't, and and that's because I wake up every day thinking, do you know what? You you could lose it, and you could get into trouble because it's happened to the it's happened to far yeah, great, yeah. No, far no, greater absolutely, absolutely. far greater sort of chefs yeah. and businessmen than yeah. me. Yeah, and that keeps me that keeps me hungry. That keeps me motivated, and I and it's great to do things. And Staff Canteen has always been an amazing support for this because it's nice to be able to say to someone like yourself, Mark, who's a great friend that. I last year was a big year for us yeah. and I just want to make it very very clear that that's it yeah. you know I had no idea the Mariners was going to be a part of our lives we've everything has been 2005 number 6 2010 Rajanos 2015 Padso Townhouse it's been a slow burn yeah, yeah, yeah. then then 2018 Mahe cookery school and a chef's table very small very yeah. intimate there you go John Walton thank you for 15 years of absolute support and loyalty it's your business off you go yeah. do 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 you I even notice on the plaque outside it's John first and then you on purpose yeah 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 to then to then be able to bring Chris McClurg into the realm yeah. as now the the chef de cuisine yeah. and number six well that leads nice I'm going to talk about the team now because whenever you phoned us up and you said can you come down and do a video you know and you've always been fantastic and you've always said 
but these guys need to be in it and, and that's Chris or John and then you've got and we need to go out of Regiano's now because you need to film Jack and yeah. he's going to do a mackerel for you yeah. y- you have genuinely always 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 put the team at the forefront so how do you build that with the team it's not easy you know no. we're, we're, we're going through the same thing at the moment you know you're adding people adding people how do you build that with the team that trust that loyalty and get them to become as invested in the business as you are I think first and foremost in order to be you know for me the greatest leaders are the people if you're a great leader you make people feel smart and I've always believed in that. It's about making them feel like smart and a part of it, and and making them make their own decisions, and not you know not just put oh yeah family family genuinely is a family. Yeah. You spend a lot of lot of time yeah. with these people. But you probably spend more time with them than your family. Than your family, yeah. and that for me has been always at the forefront. And I think when you look at it like a, when you look at it, you know like a great football team. You know, the greatest managers, you know, in the world, when you sort of see how, you know, you manage that, because it's like a group of players. And the analogy is so similar. If you've got that player out of position or in the wrong position, they won't they won't get you the result. You won't win the games and ultimately win what you're going for. And that's exactly what I try to do with the businesses. I've got an incredible set of brilliant, you know, players that want to be a part of it that enjoy enjoy kind of you know playing and it is about making it fun and it is about making something of them because yeah it's easy to say oh you know I'm nothing without my team but that's the truth of it you know and I'm also a big believer as well that you have to have people in your business that can execute your ideas actually better than you can yeah. and I can sit here and I, and say that because I I love to read books on on leadership. I love to, whether it be Ant Middleton and you know from a, from yeah. a military the culture, SAS from yeah, the yeah, SAS, yeah, yeah. Yeah, whether yeah. it be some of the most incredible businessmen in the world. I'm very lucky that I've had you know an incredible sort of businessman in my life. You know, in Derek, who has helped shape me and made me understand that the cooking is default. The rest of it you know, is won and lost in the office. And if you aren't looking at those things, if you aren't focusing on your P&L accounts, if you aren't making sure that you're making a profit, because actually, profit is progress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a dirty word. No, no, no. You know, we're not, you know, like, we're not kind of making all the money and taking, you know, holidays all the time. And the team see that. They see that I lead from the top. I, there's nothing that I would ever get them to do that I wouldn't do myself. And ultimately, I think they also can see that, like, I'm trying to keep it tight and compact and consolidate. And like I say, 28, 2019 was a huge year. But do you know what? Now I'm, I'm very happy. I'm content with what I got. I'm actually not like, I want this. I want to open that. I want to go here. What I want to do is where can I, where can I take this? Where can number six go? You know, how can I make Reggiano's better? That's what we're doing right now. Yeah, yeah. Pubs just open. The rooms, constant investment. That Emma's ethos on the bedrooms was always, when you arrive, you must walk into that bedroom feeling like you're the first person to ever yeah. stay there. Okay, yeah. That in itself yeah, is it's such a challenge, right? a challenge yeah, yeah. to do. Day yeah. in, day yeah. out, yeah. seven days a week. Yeah. The cookery school and the, um, the, the chef's table... Me and John have run that now for four months, and we've looked at it, and we're like, right, how can we, how can we fit this in now? So this year we're going to make it a lot more about the chef's table, then release cookery schools too every single month that John can really focus on and actually teach people cookery that he loves, because otherwise it was starting to become too much of a kind of commercial kind of rollout of courses that in the end that we're kind of looking at veganism and dietaries and all of that. Well, we. We, we don't ignore that but John doesn't really want to do a vegan yeah, yeah. course John yeah. wants to show you cooking that he loves yeah. so then we're we're giving you something from the soul from the heart yeah uh, and then now um, we've got a brilliant development area so now we can be developing dishes for Cafe Reggiano for the Mariners and number six so you know my my sort of goal and my long-term plan is to that when people come to Padstow and what we found Mark in the last kind of year the people are calling it the trilogy. They're coming. They're eating at number six. Yeah. They're coming over to Mariners. They're eating at Reggiano's, and they're really loving what yeah. we're doing because yeah. we're offering this whole diverse repertoire, this whole diverse cuisine. And I suppose ultimately, I'm really proud of that. Yeah. I, as a chef, I look back and think of all the training and all the chefs I've worked for, and that 
yeah, do you know what? I can do a Scotch egg well, but also <laughs> I can also I can cook a beautiful piece of turbot yeah, yeah. with some St. Enadoc asparagus yeah. and a really nice sauce at number six. But actually, I love pizza at Reggiano's, and I love... I love getting right into it with Jack about a pizza, yeah. and I love coming over here and like and Joe saying to, and Joe and Tom going, Paul, we got we got some new pork pie um, flavors to show you, and then like ha- you know we ha- everything we do here, you know we do kind of big numbers here, and people are like, do you make all of that? And yeah, we do. You do, yeah. We yeah, do hand yeah. raise. That's why the boys went and spent a day with um, Callum at um, Holborn Dining. Holborn Dining. And Callum said to me, and I I owe it to him, and I and I always I always will put down where I've had inspiration. Callum was like, do you know what? If I was opening a pub, he was like, I'd do a hot pork pie, not a cold pork pie with a jelly. It was like, brilliant. So we went up there. They learned all the pastry, hand raising, water based. You do like hot water paste. Yep. Yeah. Hot water, hand raising them up. And then uh, and then we, we do a warm pork pie here Lovely. and we serve it. But we, so we, what we do is though, when they're set, when they're sat resting, we still put all of the jelly in okay. there. But it, but it basically just soaks in soaks there. It's in not there. set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and then yeah. we serve it with pickle lily. That's it. And that, to me, makes me incredibly proud to yeah. have that repertoire, to be able to kind of come over here and talk about pub classics. Like, I, it blows me away forever. I've always wanted to do a ploughman's because wherever I go, I get a ploughman's and I'm like, oh man, this could be so good. The cheese is yeah, freezing yeah, yeah, cold. Yeah, 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 the yeah, meats yeah. are rubbish. The yeah. bread is the from the supermarket. Are the, the onions are, are, are crap and that. But to be, and pickle. Yeah, but to be able to now do an absolutely beautiful ploughman's, it's my go-to dish when I when yeah. I when I come here. Um, Gordon's a bit of a regular here. Um, and he's got a place here yeah he? yeah I so thought Gordon, he had. Gordon and his family come in here quite a lot yeah. and I think I mean Gordon's actually pretty much gone through the menu I mean he will when he's down here for the summer he's in here every day is he and he's pretty and much that's had, pretty good testament for the cooking isn't yeah. it yeah and he comes in here a bit kind of ill and, and it's brilliant because they, you know the family you don't gone, give him a discount do you no, he, he, and he doesn't. But, it, but so he's, he's he's wealthy enough. He's you fine. know what though? He gets looked after in pork pies. He loves the pork pie, right? But he'll come in and he'll like the family have been water skiing or they've been out on the boat all day and he pull up and he rock in, have a drink, have a have a ploughman's and just go off. Lovely. And that to me is yeah. you know is the mariners. So in essence, what I think of you know you've always given me the platform to kind of you know put it out there and and say is is that. Our goal and my long-term goal is just consolidation. Now we've we've built this, you know, amazing collection of businesses, and it's it's so important to me. At forty years old, it's everything I believe in. Yeah, I want to be I want to be a great businessman. Yeah, I want to be a great chef and be rec- and be recognised as a as a as a chef that you know kind of yeah he, he did all right and and I want to be recognised in that sort of culinary way and gastronomic way, but also to inspire the younger generation. But ultimately, when you come down to Padstow and Rock, we, we, we're, we're doing our best. Yeah. We wake up every day and we're doing our best. And I couldn't I couldn't do that or guarantee that if I spread that further. You know, the, the infrastructure I've got, you know, Alex, who you've known for years, yeah, yeah. Alex started with me as a supervisor. Yeah. He's now, you know, he's now, he's now a CEO. He's, a, yeah. he's an incredible operations director. We're just about to we're just about to take on an office, you know things like that. In Mark, Padstow. In Padstow, yeah. I, I don't take that for granted. It's yeah. right on the water's edge. It's called Water's Edge. It's glass glass fronted, and we're going to put HR in there, accounts, guest relations. So that's where they take the bookings for the whole. All group. of those things that make no money, but you have yeah. to have them. Have now. to have it because yeah. we've we've run out of space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we now we used to have a little above Regiano is yeah. a is a one bedroom yeah, yeah. flat where they all work. Yeah. Like just well, you've evicted your sister place. to turn it into a cookery school. Haven't yeah, you? yeah. My <laughs> si- that's very very true. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> <laughs> she used to come to me and she went, like, Paul, there's a bit of water coming. I said, do you know what? It's, it's all right. You'll be okay. So we're just having a bit of heavy rainfall. Now she looks at Mahe, this beautiful, luxurious space. So, so yeah, we, we, we've got this office space now for accounts, HR, um, digital media. We have someone now full time because over, across the five businesses, we've got over 20 platforms. Wow. If, you have a, if you have a Facebook and an Instagram and a Twitter and, a, you know, various bits for everything. So... So yeah, that's moving there. Right, and see, let's let's talk about media then. So, you know, it's a, it's a completely different landscape now, right? I mean, yeah. you know, good God, uh, you know, social media. You're you're just tweeting me there saying because I can't use the dictaphone. You know, we live in this world now, <laughs> but you know, you've had great success with the media. You've been on the telly, GBM, you know, various other shows. 
But I th- for me, I think you've done it the right way. You've had a product first and then the media's come afterwards. Yeah. But do you still think there's chefs out there that are seeking media before they get their product right? And what's your advice in terms of how do you get into the media? You're absolutely right. Like, don't worry about all that stuff. And I can only, you know, I'm probably, you've got like Tom Kerridge, Sat Baines, Claw Bozzy, Daniel Clifford. I worked for Gordon. Gordon and Marcus Waring, probably the, the the generation before that. Yeah. And when I worked for Gordon, Gordon was was unknown, and but he had an he had an incredible product, which was the aubergine and Royal Hospital Road. Yeah. And when he went to Royal Hospital Road, it was his. Yeah. And then when I left Gordon and I came to Cornwall, I then made I made I met amazing friends, you know, like Tom Kerridge, Sat, people like that. And you know, look at Tom now, but the Hand and Flowers was phenomenal. And then it won. Then it won two stars. Yeah. And then Tom then sort of branched out and diversified. And Tom's just fantastic on television. And he's just. But equally, he's got a team now as well, isn't he? Absolutely. And what you know behind you know when you look at the infrastructure, Tom's got yeah. you know Warren Garrett, Warren executive Garrity, yeah. chef, yeah. Alan Dooley, yeah. you know CEO. Like he's got he's got absolutely incredible infrastructure yeah. behind him. And I mean. I, I have such a great, I have an incredible relationship yeah, yeah. with Tom, but yeah. I have a great relationship with Tom's team, you know, yeah. like Nick Beardshaw, Tom Did DeKaiser. you use Tom as a sounding board? Yeah, all the time. I mean, you're going to because, you know, you're, you know, that we've we've been through a lot together, you know, we've had we've had children at the same time, Beth and Emma are the best of friends, me and Tom are the best of friends. And your relationship friends. was what started with Gary Rhodes? Yeah. So we've known each other for 20 odd years. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. That for me was important. So when people look at when people see this now, and Johnny Godden from Flying Fish, he always says that to me. He's like, he's like, people always say about you, Paul. But he's like, I tell him like, it started in two thousand five. Is this joke any better, Johnny? No, no. And he and he, and he still sounds like a carrot cruncher. Um, but like, we started in two thousand and five. Yeah. Great British Menu came knocking in twenty eleven. Yeah. Up until that, yeah. I, no, no one, no, I was completely and utterly unknown yeah. and the best piece of advice I had was from Derek who knew Padstow really well didn't know it from Adam all I'd done is come down here like everybody else as a chef to eat at Rick Stein's yeah. and went back to London yeah. and he said to me don't go down there and compete with Rick yeah. compliment Rick yeah. and you will be for the next few years the second and third night restaurant yeah. and that's exactly what we were Mark Rick Stein is the reason we moved here. Yeah. I've never ever tried to compete with Rick. Yeah. I tried to compliment Rick. Everybody knows that Rick is the master of fish and slowly but surely I met different suppliers and p- people were like coming down to see us and I was like, do you know what? What else we've got in Cornwall is world class meat and poultry and vegetables. And when I was working at Royal Hospital Road, three Michelin stars, we took lamb from Cornwall every day. And then I'm now I'm here in Cornwall as you can see now, it's January. It's a mild climate, isn't it? Yes, lovely. It's like this kind of pretty much all year round. So we have this incredible grass-fed produce that I showcase at number six, that I show people that this is what we have in Cornwall. And do you know what? You're going to you're gonna get brilliant fish with Nathan. You're going to get brilliant fish with Rick. We're going to show you some fish and shellfish, but actually we're going to show you quite a lot of um, meat and vegetables, yeah, yeah. That yeah. what we've got down here. And... That's I've always stuck by that. I've never ever tried to, I've never ever tried to compete with Rick. I've got a brilliant relationship with um, with Rick and Jill. Jill especially because Jill still lives um, full time in Padstow, and and also Jack. You know Jack. Yeah, yeah. You know from time to time when I see Jack when and he's not surfing. When he's not surfing, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and we've got this. We've just got this brilliant thing now in in Padstow it's and the surrounding the area, areas. Right? Because if yeah. you're going to come to Padstow. Why come to Padstow if there's only one great restaurant? Yeah. Surely you bring more people to Padstow if there's more great restaurants. Absolutely. You touched on it earlier. I mean, look now, we've got Robin Hudson, probably yeah. one of the greatest hoteliers yeah, that this country's group. ever, yeah. ever yeah, yeah. you know, Absolutely. produced. The guy's incredible. Yeah. So you've got Robin Hudson now putting a pig down yeah. here. You've got the guys from Epicurean in Bristol yeah. moving just on the outskirts of Padstow at Trivium yeah. Mill. You've got Prawn on the Lawn that have been here for a couple of years. You've got what we're doing, what Rick's doing. Like... You've, I mean, literally, you know, like business idea here, Mark. Like, I mean, we should do a monorail. So then, <laughs> so then, it really is like it really is like the gastronomic Alton can you get Towers. A, can you get like an, <laughs> an, an Emirates cable car? Because yeah. <laughs> you've just got all these places in such close proximity that 
why you know people like oh you know you worried when other when other things open up no I'm no, not yeah, yeah. because that's, that's, because that's narrow minded isn't it? it of course it is because with Brexit and what we what everybody in Cornwall has seen in the last couple of years if you're good and you've got a great standard and you're passionate about really pleasing customers and delivering amazing hospitality Mark you will you will be busy all the time mm. because it's not just Brexit I have a global warming yeah yeah you've um how you know the the worth of the pound abroad brexit just so many factors now that is encouraging people you know and let's look at the positives of of brexit that actually yeah by voting out you know it is about trying to make britain great and buy british and celebrate british and really kind of celebrate the enterprise of britain and that for the tourism industry because that is our main industry in cornwall yeah. to, you know fishing and farming now they're bloody hard industries yeah absolutely tourism is where we can create jobs and you know and really celebrate cornwall and i really want to add as well the actual the actual cornish the the padstow the padstow born and bred i've got some incredible now like padstow friends and do you know what they are jumping they're jumping on the bandwagon you know you've got i've got Painters and decorators we use, you know, Alan and Taylor, like they're so they're so passionate about what they do. You remember like painters and decorators of the old days, covered in paint, paint, always got a roll up on the go and painting. These boys putting all their work on Facebook and Instagram, Brilliant. like they've invested in all this spraying equipment. They're so proud of their finish, and they're like, do you know what? There is so much work to go around. Another couple I know they've um, opened up a company called Padstow Property Management where they look after yeah. holiday homes yeah. and, and people I would that want that's their good business down here. Um, yeah, and people who want their homes maintained all year round. These are these are Padstow born and bred yeah. young people, really having a go, really kind of like trying to enjoy and embrace the enterprise that's happening right here in Cornwall. Did you have an agent then? How does it work? If it, it, do you have an agent? Or what's the process? So two years ago, we set up with Source Communications, yeah. um, and you know her very well. And never, never, ever met this this girl like ever in my life. And it was Richard Corrigan's daughter, yeah, Jess, Jess Corrigan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so why 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 do you feel you need? Let's start with that. Why why a PR company? What what does it do for you? Because I felt that Source would be able to really kind of enhance the profile okay. that we had already built yeah. and we're building, and they would be able to push it to a wider audience. And just make some really interesting things happen. Okay. Maybe set up a couple of like great brand partnerships, yep. which they have done. Yeah. Uh, make you know sort of journalists. You know, as you know, like sometimes you know, like it's kind of anything kind of sort of you know south of south of Richmond or north of Watford. It's it, you really got to kind of try and prize them out of there. And we. We haven't got that pulling power on our own, but we have when you've got the added bonus of a, of a great PR company like Source. Yeah. But what took it next level for us was that they put on our account Jess Corrigan. Right, yeah. And I've got to tell you, God, she is, you know, her father, you know, her yeah, father's yeah, daughter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She is, she understands the industry. She's c clearly, you know, her mum and dad have done an incredible job on her. She's hungry, she's starving for success. And you know sometimes PR can leave you feeling a bit like, what am I paying, am I paying for, for here? Yeah, yeah. What am I actually getting here for all this money I'm shoveling into PR? But I've never, ever felt like I've okay. had such value for money. But right. that was that was Jess. She was driving it, you yeah. know, and, and obviously had an incredible platform, which is Source. Yeah. Uh, and then agent-wise, uh, a lady called Martine Carter. Okay. Um, and <clears throat> again... An agent's pretty simple, you know. There, that that that's an easy one, you know, because a percentage of nothing is nothing. So, so is that how it works? That's how it works. So, if she lands you a gig, she yeah. only gets paid on that. Exactly. Right. Okay. And okay. that's how that works. Okay. Um, that's fair enough, isn't it? The good thing about that, because then you can say, well, you surely you land the gigs by yourself, and to a certain extent you do. But what the the, the beauty of having someone like Martine is that, like, for so many years, Mark. I've never been paid. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm saying yes to everything. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not looking for the violin here, but like, yeah, do you know what? I have spent yeah, yeah. years on that M5. Yeah, yeah. I have spent years on planes and trains and going here, there and everywhere and doing all this stuff for, for nothing. Yeah. And now kind of it's organised. I'm not worrying about getting me airfare back and me accommodation and, and my sort of price for the yeah, gig yeah. Yeah, yeah. Martin takes care of yeah. all of that and yeah. that that to me is really worth something because 
Also, as well, I've got better at saying no yeah. because yeah. actually. I'm away from my family a lot, but I'm away from my businesses, yeah, yeah. and I want to be in my businesses. Yeah. Like I, I, I pretty much guarantee that if you, you know, if you come down here, you know, you're going to see me, and and I'll always say, and I've always said to you, I'll never ever kid anyone that they're going to see me cooking at Mariners. I was for the first six weeks. I worked here seven days a week, and I did every single service, yeah. and then I pulled away once. I, once I'd got the message right, and I'd got it to how I wanted it to be, and then I leave them to make their own mistakes and, and to run it, but know that I'm always here. I'm always here if you need me. And I'll, and I'll visit them every day. Same with Reggiano's, same with the townhouse. And Mahe is right in number six, but Mahe is where I'll be, in the kitchen, on the pass, talking to the guests, meeting the guests, because, you know, I've kind of, the rest of them are by Paul Ainsworth. Number six is Paul Ainsworth at number six. Yeah. And I, and I want to live by that. With, with your agent then, I guess it helps as well with contracts and things like that. I spoke to a chef who you'll know, and he, he did something for a company, and he put his name to it. Yeah. I said to him, well, how long have you leased your name to that? He said, what do you mean? I said, well, in 30 years' time, they can still be using that. Yeah. So do agents help with contracts like that? Yeah, yeah. Because that's a whole new ball game, right? <clears throat> Huge. I mean, take it, t- take it like this. If someone, because the thing is, right? As you say, you, 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 your stock is rising. The more exposure you get, the more source get for you. The more gigs, the more businesses. The value of someone, you know, you saying this is a great product. That's a massive commercial yeah. value in the market. Yeah. So it's it's getting chefs to understand that, you know. Yeah, it's all right. So yeah, I'll do that for you. I'll do, like you were saying earlier, but there is a there is a commercial value yeah. to doing that. Yeah. So I guess the agent says, "This is how that deal should be structured." Yeah. yeah? And then when that deal ends, if you and the whoever it's with, say a brand partner, if you then don't want to carry that deal on, it ends there. Yeah. And and this is where a lot of chefs can come unstuck yeah. because chefs ordinarily didn't set out in life to be businessmen they didn't set out to kind of have to kind of understand contracts or speaking to lawyers or understand all of that technical jargon yeah. and if you don't have a good solicitor you know a good lawyer or excuse me a good agent then you're ultimately you're going to get stung yeah. and someone is going to kind of go okay well it doesn't matter you're, okay, you've gone. No worries. We're still going to trade on your name, yeah, exactly. or we're still gonna yeah. we're still gonna put Remember your James name. James Cochran. Yeah, they used his name. Yeah, yeah. You know, a restaurant in his name that he was no longer cooking at. Yeah, be- because they had the IP on his name. Yeah, crazy. And you've got to make sure that you're you know that you're you're protected like yeah, that yeah. And, and and looking after yourself and and you know also as well you know like there's nothing wrong with doing these things you know as long as you the only bit of advice I would just say to people is. Don't ever endorse or don't ever become a part of something that you actually don't believe yeah, in yeah, yeah. and you're just doing it for a quick quid because honestly, it won't work. No. It really, really won't work. But there's nothing wrong. But you're at a point now where you can pick and choose? Yeah. 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 You know, um, you know, we've we've just set up an incredible partnership with BMW. Okay. And, you know, they approached us. And they it was as they simple don't as want this. a guy that runs a chef website. To they be could do. do I'll, they? Yeah. I'll find yeah, out. Yeah. I've got a meeting with them at the end of February. <laughs> and a, a young... You know, a young lad. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I, I come from a working class family in Southampton, and you, as a kid, you, you knew growing up. You know, as a kid, BMW was oh, oh BMW. Yeah. Wow, what a brand, a luxury brand. And you know, now I'm 40 years old, and like you know, BMW, they want to have a, you know, they want to have an arm in the southwest, yeah. and they want to be able to bring clients to the southwest, right. Um, part of their quintessential excellence um, thing they do and they want to trust and know that they can bring their clients and these clients are wowed and they can stay at the townhouse they can have a cookery school they can Brilliant. have yeah. a chef's table with, yeah. with myself and John and you know and in return you know they you know in return you can drive their cars yeah. and you can and you know myself and Emma can uh, you know can have a BMW each like but I believe in it and yeah. I believe in the brand and I'm comfortable and, and, and I look at these cars and, I, and like they blow me away. Yeah. They're like, wow, what a beautiful car. Yeah, yeah. But again, I didn't, when I set number six up and I did go on my own, that wasn't in my, yeah. thought, that wasn't in my thought process. Yeah. And it, that's a byproduct of success, isn't it? Absolutely. And you've often said to me as well, you know, like, and, 
you know that's for somebody you know that advice is for somebody that is is a head chef or set up set up their own business and you know they're they're pushing on and they want success my advice for you know a young chef who's just starting out you know like i was quite lucky that when i was kind of 18 years old i didn't have i didn't have social media or anything to worry about you know i didn't have to look at anything like that all I did was think, right. Thank God we did everything we did before there was camera phones. Absolutely. <laughs> and all I did was like, right, who do I want to go work for? I, I landed a brilliant job with Gary Rhodes. Yep. Phenomenal. In my time there, we won a Michelin star. From there, I was like, I want to go work for this guy, this guy that's meant to be absolutely crazy. And, you know, I told my mum and dad, I might get the sack here. I like, this guy is off the off the charts. My mum couldn't understand it. She was like, "Why?" As far as my mum was concerned, I'm working for Gary Rhodes. He's on TV. Everybody yeah, yeah, knows yeah, him. Yeah, like yeah. you've made it. So I went and worked for Gordon, and that was, you know, six years of of absolute. It was a blur in a sense, but what a training school that is. SAS. Yeah, yeah. You know what a what a training school and three years of that with Marcus Waring. Yeah. But the whole time I didn't have this device or this 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 network that I could be looking at and thinking, oh, what's he doing now? What's my mate doing now? So do you think social media brings a false sense then? Because we, we all, we're, right, we're terrible, right? We only put nice things on social media. We don't ever say it's two o'clock in the morning and I'm still driving from wherever yeah. to get back to yeah. and I've got to be up again at six. We don't yeah. do that on social media. Yeah. Do we? we go, look at this food I'm eating or yeah. look at this holiday I'm yeah. having. Or yeah. So do you think social media kind of creates this false environment for people? Of course it does. It can be used It can be used for tons of positives. But what the point I was alluding to, the, the bit for me is I gave great loyalty yeah. and time to Gordon, to Marcus and to Gary because I wasn't I wasn't sort of curious or, or kind of, oh, what's over there? Oh, that looks a bit shinier. Yeah. Or that the grass looks a bit greener there. So you weren't driven by the materialistic things at a younger no. age? No. I, what I was driven by was was actually, it wasn't just learning about the cooking. It was actually how Gordon man managed how he, be, you know, behaved. It, the, the whole thing, oh, you know, it's, it's shouting and screaming. No, it's not. Yeah. Gordon was a taskmaster. He, yes, he gave you the biggest bollocking. So did Marcus. Yeah. So did Gary. But that actually, all three of them, in their own way, then followed it up, and they had their own man management yeah. styles. So I actually, I actually glad I wasn't a chef that sort of did staged here, then staged there, then went here, then went there, just sort of trying to take, Five take, take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I actually got was a huge understanding. I can, I can actually remember and look back on how Gordon ran his business, not just looking for his beautiful foie gras terrine or his lobster and longestine ravioli Ravioli, like i i I learned so much more same with gary same with marcus same with the other kind of chefs i've worked for you know like over the years and i think my advice is is pick somewhere go eat there go and do a star share and think could i realistically like could i see myself here for two three years and if the answer is yes just immerse yourself in it um, and, and I think the same is if you're in, if you're a head chef now and, and you've just opened up your own business, just get your head down, work hard, and the rest will the re- the rest will come. It is if if you if you're good and your standards are great and and people keep coming back to your restaurant or keep coming back and doing what you're doing, the the rest will follow. And I've got this thing, you know, like just keep hustling. So just keep hustling. Just 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 to conclude this then, so you got a big loan at the moment. But business is going really well for you. You're, you know, you, the brands, very, very successful. What's the end game, Paul? The end game is to. I'm not perfect at this yet. That none of us are. To 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 live in the moment a bit more. Right. To. to what does that mean? To enjoy what's happening yeah, right now. Okay, yeah, yeah. Rather yeah, than. Yeah. And, and when I say like, yeah, I'm not looking. I'm, I'm not looking. I don't want to open in London. I'm not looking to open in London. I'm not looking to open overseas. That's not Gordon, by the way, was it? <laughs> oh, no. it's a nice car though, wasn't it? I like how the way our heads went. For for all intents and purposes, that was a Porsche GT3, and it was absolutely stunning. <laughs> Can tell we're in rock. Um, no, it to yeah to answer your question, it's to live in the moment and enjoy what is happening right now and I yeah. don't and I don't do that and Emma 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 sort of is always telling me that like you know so is Emma a leveler for you then hugely okay like she's you know she 
it's not about you know behind behind every you know every you know great man. It's uh, alongside. And, yeah, or, or actually even in front, in front clearing of, the yeah. path. Yeah. Um, and and that's exactly kind of what you know like what Emma is um, to do the best by Arisi. Yeah. And if we have any more any more children, and not just go okay, yeah, well I am working hard and. You know, there's a ton of dads that sort of say, you know, they weren't there, and and you know, am I going to be the dad that's always there? No, of course I'm not. Yeah. I, I can't be, no, no, no. but I will do my best by her, and 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 sort of you know create memories as a family, and ultimately, Mark, just build something that, as as it progresses, like I say, it's very hard running businesses, yeah. and you do have to crunch numbers because yeah. if you don't, you won't survive. No. Um, but actually, I'd like to. I'd like to get to a point where, yeah, we are. A, a, we are a brilliantly commercially successful brand and collection of great businesses. That if you're staying with us, eating with us, having a cookery school with us, you walk away from it saying, "Do you know what? That blew my mind." And that is that's that's everything I want to stand for. I would, I would be gutted, and I wouldn't be able to sleep. And I've not got the brain for it. I. I'm happy to say to you, I have not got a brain that can that can roll out and can have restaurants all over all over the world because I I I, I, I Emma's knows I'd be a nightmare. I'm a nightmare. You know, if I, if, if finding so, your level either, is there? There isn't. If someone's coming here and we've mucked up a burger or we've got a pizza wrong or we've made a mistake at number six and that, like it, it rips me apart. And 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 I I really really do love. A, being about the attention to detail. I guess it comes back to how much money is enough as well. Yeah. How much is enough? Yeah. You know, and and I, and I like like I say, where I'm from, I never, I never kind of you know thought that I'd drive the car that I drive, and you know, and live in the house that I live in, and have this kind of collection of businesses. And like, you're right, it is about understanding and realizing when enough is enough. Yeah. And I've got a lot on I've got a lot on my plate, but do you know what? There's so much left to do at number six. There's so much I want to strive for at number six and achieve at number six. That's where it all started. I want this pub to remain a proper locals boozer that is you know like where we are now that hugs you when you walk in. I wanna I wanna blow people away with awesome Mediterranean style kind of food. It you know it Regano's. I want our rooms to feel like what Emma said that they're you're the first person to ever stay in them. And I want Mahe to grow, and I just want to. In, I want to enjoy inspiring people. As you know, we set up the Paul Ainsworth Academy with Truro yep. and Penwith College yep. last year. We've now got five apprentices. Wow! Well you done. know, we've got Liv that's just completed year one, uh, and you know as well as I do. I've spoken to you about it. I always get, you know, like what we're we going to do with this problem in the industry. I can't. I can't solve that problem, but what I can do is, is do your set, little bit. Do my little bit, and I've set up this apprenticeship to show young kids that, like, do you know what? It is bloody hard work, but if you stick at it, oh, I tell you what, yeah. you can do so much with this industry. Yeah. You can work all over the world. You can meet some of the most incredible people. You can, you can open up something. You can try and, you know, do your own thing or go and work at a, a beautiful hotel like I was with Andre Garrett last week I've never seen him so happy like, I've never ever seen him so happy he's like Paul do you know what like I, the, the sort of days of me wanting to open up something he said like now I work in this incredible beautiful five star hotel yeah, yeah. he's like I've got an incredible quality of life like every aspect of that hotel is mind blowing oh, yeah, yeah. right we were there doing the air ambulance. Yeah, cool. like, we well had done, room well done ser- for the money you raised, by the way. Fantastic. Thank you. Fantastic. Room service, awesome. The Norfolk, awesome. The breakfast, it's, it's the best breakfast yeah, I've yeah. ever seen in my life. Yeah. Andre's responsible for all of that yeah. with his team, and it's like, do you know what? That's what it's about. And he's happy, and yeah. he's, you know, he's, he's, you know, he's just enjoying life. And this industry is amazing, but you just got to give it your all. Yeah. Look, um, I have no doubt you'll be a success everything you've done has been successful you've got an amazing team it's a pleasure to come down and talk to you thank you very much thank Thank you you, mark thank you and thank you for always giving us a chance to uh, express our our insight and our uh, our view on the industry so thank you mate that's what we're here for we hope you enjoyed this interview and if you have 
any comments, feel free to tweet us or comment on the post. Uh, we're making all of our interviews available to download. And finally, if you like what we do, whether it's our podcast or our videos or even our features, please head over to our Patreon page and support us there. This episode of Grilled is sponsored by Rationale, your leading provider in multifunctional hot food preparation equipment. Register now for a free Rationale live demo at www.rationale-online.com.